Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Joanne Maddy, and I'm with the BC Institute of Technology in Canada. And I'm going to talk to you today about a project where we developed a exercise machine for uh, rowing at home. So uh, first of all, just to start, there's no conflict for me to declare. Um, this project was a multidisciplinary collaboration. My background is mechanical engineering, but with this project, we worked with OTs, biomechanists, uh, our, a range of um, different investigators. So there's lots of evidence out there about the benefits of getting good cardio exercise, and that applies for everybody, but in particular for people in wheelchairs who are sitting all day, this is especially important. Um, the challenge is there's limited options available for people who are in wheelchairs. So many uh, resort to wheeling, which is great, fantastic cardio exercise, but for those with vulnerable shoulders, uh, adding that extra mileage could contribute to repetitive strain injury and upper extremity uh, overuse injuries. Um, so uh, if you look at equipment that's actually available, there's a picture here of the upper body ergometer, the hand crank, uh, a great piece of equipment, but really there's not a whole lot of other options out there for wheelchair users if they wanna get a really good cardio workout. So this spawned the area of research in our lab, looking at adaptive exercise equipment that people could use independently from a wheelchair. Whoops, sorry. Beep. Come on. There we go. Um, so our preliminary work, what we wanted to do was build on equipment that's uh, already commercially available in a gym. Uh, so, Part of the reason for this is we wanted people to be able to go to a community gym rather than having to go to an adapted or specialized gym. But it was also a little bit strategic from a design perspective. So uh, there's companies out there that have got big markets, lots of development dollars, and they're creating these fantastic exercise machines. We thought it makes sense to build on the design work that they have already done um, and the years of experience that they have doing that. Uh, they also have manufacturing and distribution channels in place, and we thought this could help us with our commercialization model as well. So we started our research with the adapted rower. With This is a Concept2 rower here. It's a very uh, popular machine out there, probably the most popular rowing machine. And it's a great cardio workout for those of you who have tried it. And what's nice about it is uses the muscles that are complementary to wheeling, so those back posterior muscles. Uh, later, we expanded the work to a uh, ski erg, and I'll just briefly touch on that today as well. So a little bit about our design process. We do our design based on the Stanford design thinking process. So the first stage is to empathize, to really uh, understand the challenges of the user and then help define what problem it is we're trying to solve. Uh, we then use that information to create design requirements. We ideate around concepts, uh, brainstorm ideas, and then we build something, test it, and then iterate that process, go back to users and have them test it. Um, so it's very much an iterative process. And I'll talk a little bit about that as we go through. Uh, our aim, especially in the beginning, is to do really rough prototypes, uh, just get them out there in front of the users, fail fast, and go back to the drawing board. Uh, we get users from, or sorry, we get input from users from all sorts of different ways. We do interviews, we do focus groups, we actually do trials, observations, and we try to in include as wide a range of users as we can. So people, different ages, males, females, different disabilities, uh, different wheelchair types, uh, we also include in our stakeholders experts, so that would be trainers and coaches, um, and we make sure that all their voices are heard. So it's it's so interesting when you're building a product like this um, and the need for including that diversity right from the start. So our goal with the design was to keep it as simple as possible, but there's lots of adjustability, obviously, that you need when you're uh, considering such a wide range of needs of people. So really trying to understand what is the minimum amount of adjustability that you need, what are the ranges, what components need to be adjusted. And, and quite honestly, it's very tricky. And we'd always think we'd have it, we'd get a bunch of people in, and then sure enough, there'd be somebody who just didn't, it didn't work for us. So back to the drawing board. 
So after many iterations, we came up with this design of the adapted rowing machine, which we call the Aro. So uh, the nice thing about this is it allows the person to exercise from their wheelchair. They don't actually have to transfer into a machine, which was something that we heard a lot of people say they prefer not to do. And fortunately for us, we uh, realized that the Concept 2 rower actually comes in two components. So you can take off that sliding rail and the seat and then use that front fly flywheel portion of the ERG. And um, you've got a nice kind of accessible base. So the problem now is to stabilize the user and the wheelchair so that when they're rowing, they're not flying all over the place. Uh, you'll see uh, there's a wooden base there with a stripe in the middle that actually the user is sitting on that and that's stabilizing the whole system. And then we have an adapter that you'll see there on the right, and that consists of a lap pad and the chest pad. The lap pad works with a gas spring, uh, kind of like a, like a ride that you'd see at a fair. So it just locks into the user's lap. Um, and then the chest pad is adjustable both in angle and length. And that goes up against the user's chest and provides them something to push against when they're rowing. Now, if you have somebody who's got some decent trunk control, they may want to get rid of that chest adapter. So that's completely removable and then allows them to do the flexion and extension in the rowing if they would like to. So just throwing this picture up, it's not related to this talk, but I just wanted to say that we developed um, a similar adapter for the ski machine based on our design. Uh, the ski adapter, you actually don't need the chest pad, but just a nice lap pad to secure the user. And it fits nicely onto the uh, adapted, uh, the, the Concept2 ski erg. So under funding with Craig Nielsen Foundation, we were actually able to create 15 sets of these machines and install them in community gyms across Canada. Um, we've got a little bit more funding. We're getting two more sites set up fairly soon. And fortunately, we are in a position where we're not needing to make money off of this. So we were able to put all our plans online. It's all open source. Anybody who wants to build one of these things can just download our plans and build it for themselves. Uh, we're actually exploring some other sustainability models right now where we're working with a not-for-profit organization in BC. And we're going to create some kits, kind of like IKEA kits with all the components. And the Disability Foundation is going to work with us to uh, get them out to people and support people with builds. So that's very exciting for us. They're going to be at cost, which is really, this is what we want to do is just get them out there for people to use. We've been able to do lots of research on the machines. Um, we've done some research uh, understanding the energetic and physiological impact of using the Aro, and we've done some comparison studies with that hand crank. We've done some interviews on about usability and functionality and engagement. Uh, we've also done some comparative studies comparing the row and the ski. But again, totally other presentation. I just wanted to let you know that we had done that work. Um, and one of the interesting things we learned in those studies is um, not everybody wants to go to a gym to exercise. So people love the idea of being able to go to a community gym because it's close to their house and it's convenient, but they say they're often inaccessible and just that lack of adapted equipment tends to be a limitation. When it comes to adaptive gyms, they love that it was a uh, a supportive environment, it was inclusive, and that there was trained staff there, but they're few and far between. So for a lot of people, they're just not available to them. So we heard people say that they'd really love to be able to exercise at home. They thought it would be great that you wouldn't have to transport yourself to the gym, you wouldn't have to face the weather if it's bad, but the problem is there's just no equipment for them to be able to do that in the home. So interestingly, a lot of this work was going on during COVID where everybody was shifting to that at-home model, got us thinking, well, can we make adaptations to our machine that would allow people to exercise at home? And that was what spawned our home rower idea. So we wanted to keep the adapter similar as much as possible to what we had already designed because we'd fine tuned a lot of those parameters. Uh, but we wanted to use a budget ergometer this time. So instead of the Concept2, which runs at about $1,400, we started looking on Amazon. You could get this Sunny Erg uh, for $250, which was much more affordable price for a home piece of equipment. But there was a few, piece, a few criteria that had to change. Um, 
we heard from people if they wanted a home piece of equipment, it had to be small. People are living in small houses and apartments. They don't have space for a giant rowing machine in there. We also needed to make sure that we could come up with a configuration that would both stabilize the rower and the user as they exercised and also maintain the angle of pull. So if you look at this sunny erg, it's really low to the ground. So we needed a way to get the strap up to the same level. So if somebody's pulling in a horizontal fashion. So again, several iterations, and uh, this is the version of the Homer row that we are working with right now. So it's a basic wooden frame. And uh, you can see there's uh, the picture on the right there. You can see where the strap comes out. There's a little roller there that keeps it nice and smooth when the person pulls. Um, we needed to get rid of that big giant base that the wheelchair user was sitting on. And uh, that was actually a real challenge, how you stabilize that rower in a small space. And after several different tries of things, we came up with this idea of a ceiling pole. They're like the ones that the drywallers use. So adjustable, they come in three different sizes and we've got a big flange up there that sits on the ceiling. And that seems to be locking them in pretty nicely. So we're in the process right now of doing a study, trying to evaluate home exercise versus community exercise. And, uh, Part of this is we want to understand the user's perspectives of our home row. They're what they liked, what they didn't like, what the facilitators and barriers were to exercising at home versus exercising in the community, and also get further feedback on our design so we can continue to refine it. To be included in the study, you have to be uh, greater than oh, older than 19. You have to be a wheelchair user and ready to participate in exercise, so very broad. It could be both manual wheelchair user or power wheelchair user. And for the study, they're given the home row set up in their home. They're allowed to use it there for two months. And then they're given a pass to a community gym where the other adapted rower is and they exercise there. We ask them to keep an exercise diary. They participate in semi-structured interviews and we're using the system usability scale to get some feedback on the actual design. Sorry, skipped again. Uh, so we've got seven participants that have been recruited to the study to date. Unfortunately, I was hoping that we would have more results to present today, uh, but the recruitment's actually been really challenging. And some of the, the big feedback that we've heard so far is even though we try to keep that footprint really small, we don't think we can get it any smaller than that. People just don't have the space in their small apartments. I'm from Vancouver. Real estate is crazy. People are living in tiny little places. So, uh, you know, I think it's an interesting finding in itself. Um, but we, we do have four participants uh, that are currently in the study. Uh, one has completed. Unfortunately, we've had three withdrawals personal reasons that happens with these longer term studies. Um, so I'll just quickly give you some feedback on the results that we've had so far. It's all very preliminary. Uh, but the feedback that we've had from users on the rowing exercise, they love that they're able to activate their posterior muscles, use that full range of motion. They're perceiving some improvements in strength, cardiovascular outcomes, and endurance. Uh, we even heard somebody say it's actually improved their wheeling. Um, overall, uh, design feedback, they found it easy to set up. They're able to use it independently and comfortably. The biggest challenge they've had is with the resistance adjustment. And I think that's one of the things going down to a low cost rowing machine is just a harder dial if, to use if you've got limited hand function and the increments are not quite as, uh, sensitive as the concept two device, um, definitely concerns with affordability. They still need the price to be low. Um, but overall, people loved it and didn't really want to give it up at the end of the study, which is nice for us to hear. Uh, I mentioned design iterations, as those are still somewhat ongoing as we go through and learn more. So we had one participant who had one of those popcorn ceilings, didn't like our, our idea of the ceiling pool. He was worried all the popcorn was going to fall from the ceiling. So we adapted a little cleat that his wheelchair could sit on, the, the caster sit on that wooden cleat and seemed to stabilize him. And I wanted to show you a quick video and uh, demonstrate some user innovation. So this is one of our participants using the machine. 
And she has limited hand function. So she's using active hands gloves that are clipped on. And what's interesting with her is she's realized that she can actually just change her hand position and that will allow her to use different muscles and um, uh, get different workout. Whoops, sorry. So overall, home versus community gym, early in the game to report because we haven't had many people complete the community gym part, but people are telling us that they've loved the idea of having the rower at home because it's convenient. They felt motivated when they see the rower right there in front of them, and it's allowed them to exercise regardless of the weather. So more results come on that soon, but uh, so far that's looking promising. So overall, I'd just like to say there's a, a lack of options out there for cardio equipment. And we're hearing from users that they want autonomy and choice in what they can do. So having multiple options for adapted equipment and where they could use this equipment may help support the quality of participation for them while still meeting their goals and, um, and needs. And our preliminary findings are showing that the home row might be a really good option to allow aerobic exercise in the comfort and convenience of the home. And I would just like to say thank you to the Craig Nielsen Foundation and NSERC for supporting this work and all the stakeholders, team members, and students who helped us with this work. So thank you. If anybody has any questions, happy to answer.